Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for October 28th, 2024. All year long, we've been studying about purpose and how we have to live our lives with a laser focus on God's fixed purpose for us and how we are not mistakes, how God sent us to this planet, you and I, at just the right time for such a time as this. You are anointed to do what you're called to do. I am anointed to do what I'm called to do. And as long as we're walking in our divine purpose, we will have, we're going to talk about it today, a level of uncommon clarity where we're not going to be shaken. We're not going to be stirred. No matter what happens, it could be that something happens to our body that we didn't expect. And we get a report from the doctor. I'm like, oh man, what am I going to do? Okay, well, let me remind myself of who I am, what I'm called to do. I'll be able to push through that. Maybe we get a report uh, from the bank or, or, or our financial uh, team, and we're looking at numbers that we, we didn't expect and we don't like. What am I going to do? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. God's purpose is still intact. Maybe we get a report about our children that we didn't want. And it really bothers us because obviously we love our children. What are we going to do? Well, let me remind myself that, that, that God's purpose is still true, right? And that God's hand is still on my life. Maybe we get a report about, and you get the point. No matter what you're facing, when you know who you are, when you know what you're called to do, you have this power, this clarity that will put, help you to push through no matter what you're facing. So the title of today's message is, when you know your purpose, you live with uncommon clarity. Say that. Say, I have uncommon clarity. I have a level of clarity that enables me to see past problems and focus on my purpose, and I'm able to do things that would cripple other people. It doesn't cripple me. Why? Because there's a level of resilience, perseverance that is developed inside of me because I know who I am. I know what I'm called to do, and I know that I'm on the path to my destiny. That's what we're going to talk about today. You ready? All right, let's, let's get ready. Open up your heart to receive. All right, well, here we go. The foundational scripture we've been looking at all year really lines up well with this message. It says this, Proverbs chapter four and verse 25 from the Passion Translation. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. Say that. Say, I refuse to be distracted. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set my gaze on the purpose that God has established before me and I will ignore life's distractions. I know who I am. I know what I'm called to do. Things may happen that I'm not happy about. Things may happen that, I'm, that are unpleasant or challenging. But at the end of the day, because I know who I am and because I know what I'm called to do, I can push through it. Put in the chat, I can push through it. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 lines up with that. James said, my fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, what do you do? See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, when what God is saying to you on the inside doesn't match what you're seeing with your natural eyes on the outside, your faith is being tested. And when your faith is tested, it actually develops inside of you the power to endure all things. And then as this patient endurance grows stronger and stronger, it releases perfection or maturity into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, there is a right time for everything, and everything on earth is going to happen at just the right time. All right, so now, David, we, we got to 1 Samuel chapter 26, and we started the journey of David in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And instead of just giving you like the next passage and breaking it down like I normally do, today and really this week, I'm led to do something a little bit different. So... I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit and look at David's life from 1 Samuel chapter 16 all the way to chapter 26. So that's 11 chapters. And looking at these 11 chapters, we see a lot going on, right? Just studying the life of David, what we've been able to study for the past few months, uh, one of the things that stands out to me is uncommon clarity, right? He knew his divine 
purpose. So let's talk about it. After Samuel, the prophet, showed up at his house and anointed him. Remember, he wasn't even in the lineup. He was outside. He was in the fields. He had to be called out of the field. And so when he got called out of the field and Samuel said, the Holy Spirit said, this is the one, and Samuel anointed him to be the next king of Israel, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day. Now, what happened was after that day, he tried to go back to living the life that he was living. His family tried to go back. Samuel tried to go back. Every every, But then Goliath came, right? And so Goliath stared down Saul uh, uh, and all of that. And in between, David played the harp for the king. Then he had to go back home. And then he went to go take lunch to his brothers. And then he heard Goliath and, you know, he killed the giant. You know the story. And so all of a sudden, he kills this giant. He's propelled into the national spotlight. He moves into the palace. So he went from pastures to living in the king's palace. He was told that he was supposed to marry the king's daughter, Merab, but that fell through, right? The king didn't like that. So then later he married Michael, another one of the king's daughters. He formed an eternal bond with the king's son, Jonathan. And so that became his best friend. He became a successful military commander, leading people in combat, and he went on countless victories. But then Saul, the man he was anointed to replace, was trying to kill him. So he went from living in the pastures to living in the palace, and then he found himself living in caves, living on the run, right? And, and so for a lot of people, all of these changes would just be too extreme. Like when you think of all of the things that he went through in a short period of time, like for a lot of people, even Christians, it would really demotivate them, destroy their focus, demoralize them. You can even fall into depression, right? They would have no drive because of everything that was going on. He went from the pastures to the palace and from the palace to the caves. And then he went from leading sheep to killing a giant to being the commander of elite forces to now leading a ragtag group of misfits. Or you could say that he went uh, from being promised the throne to running for his life because the man who's in the throne is trying to kill him. But throughout all of this, David maintained clarity and focus. Throughout all of it, he was like, well, I know what God called me to do. I don't know. Like, do you know, like when you know, I know God has called me to do some things that haven't happened yet. And when you know your purpose and you know that there's some things that haven't happened yet and God has called you to do it, do you know that that gives you like a level of clarity and focus that you can push through anything? Because whatever this is, is temporary. Whatever, put it in the chat, it's temporary. Whatever I'm facing right now is temporary. Remember the spirit of the Lord came upon him the day that he was anointed by the prophet in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and 13. So the spirit of the Lord was on him when he killed the giant. The spirit of the Lord was on him when he married the king's daughter, but the spirit of the Lord was also on him when he was in the cave. The spirit of the Lord was also on him when he was running around hiding, right? The spirit of the Lord was on him and it is this, this calling, this purpose, this destiny. And when you know that you are anointed, when you know who you are and what you're called to do, you have this uncommon clarity that will help you to push through all types of obstacles and challenges. So let's talk about it. What does this mean for you today? I think this lines up perfectly with what I've been teaching all year about purpose and how you should not be distracted. On this Monday morning, I have four things to share with you. And as I get into these four things now, I want you to rid your heart and mind of all distractions. Let's lock in four things. Number one, here we go. Divine purpose brings divine clarity. Look at David in the cave of Adullam. Remember when he was in that cave and he got to the point where he was very frustrated and then God saw to it to where his, his family showed up, his parents showed up, his brothers showed up, and his brothers who were against him before now were there to support him. And then he looked at a ragtag group of men that just showed up and these 400 men pledged their allegiance to David. And so he looked at them. This, is, this was back in chapter 22. He looks at these 400 men, and although his heart was troubled, 
although he was going through some stuff, although he was at his lowest point because he knew he was called to do something and he was supposed to be a leader and he was supposed to be the king, he looks at these ragtag group of misfits and he says, I can work with that. See, when you, when, you're, when you know who you are and you know what you're called to do, even when you're going through something, when you get any little inkling of something that God puts in your hand, you're like, oh man, I, I can work with that. Even though he was being hunted by the king, the current king, and he never lost sight of his calling. He never lost sight of his purpose. Put that in the chat. I will never lose sight of my calling. I will never lose sight of my purpose. He knew that he was called to be the king of Israel. So he saw every step of the journey as something that was part of his preparation. It was preparing him for his purpose. See, when you know what you're called to do, then everything that you go through, you know, is actually preparing you for your purpose. You know that God prepares some stuff for you from the foundations of the world. And now God is preparing you for what he already prepared for you. Put that in the chat. God is preparing me for what he already prepared for me. And so I have to go through whatever I have to go through in order to become the man or the woman that God has called me to be. And so when other people would have seen that their lives is over, I'm in this cave, oh, my life is over. David saw it as an opportunity. No, I'm gonna take these 400 guys, I'm gonna work with them, I'm gonna make them into mighty men. He didn't just live in the cave, he built a mighty fortress there in the cave. He secured his position because he knew that God's anointing was still on his life. He knew that he still had a purpose. He knew that even though he was facing challenges, he, he was reminding himself that it's only a matter of time before I become the king of Israel. And so when you don't have any confusion about who you are and what you're called to do, then whatever confusion or confusing situations you may be facing, you know that these are just temporary bumps in the road on the path to your destiny. Put in the chat, I am not confused about who I am. I'm not confused about what I'm called to do. So if I'm facing a circumstance or a situation that may seem confusing because I know who I am, I know I'm going to push through it. So here's some things we can glean from this first point. You, I, both of us, we need to see divine purpose even in uncomfortable, unfortunate, and even stressful situations. We have to see purpose in every situation. Put that in the chat. I see purpose in every situation, even when something is unfortunate, even when something is unpleasant, even when something may seem like it's bringing on unnecessary stress and weight, I got to see purpose in it. If God permitted it, I got to see purpose in it. See, when you know who you are and what you're anointed to do, your purpose becomes the lens through which you view every challenge. Like when you know who you are, and you know what you're called to do, then when you're going through something because you know your why, put that in the chat, I know my why. When you know your why, like David knew his why, then you can say, okay, I, I don't know, this is a difficult uh, circumstance or a situation, it's, it's personal challenges, it's difficult times, but I know who I am and I'm still called, so I'm, I'm gonna get through this thing. I know that I'm gonna get through it. You don't have to have everything figured out, you just need to stay focused on your calling. You just need to stay focused on the fact that you are called. What other people see as a setback, you see it as a setup for your comeback. You, why? Because you have clarity of purpose. Put that in the chat. I have clarity. I have clarity of purpose. I know who I am. And because of that, I see opposition as an opportunity for me to, to walk with God on a greater level. No matter what you're facing, you have this knack for seeing the bigger picture because you know that God's anointing is on you. And the anointing of God enables you to see past current circumstances. In other words, you can see past your problems and you can focus on your purpose. And this is exactly what David did. And you and I were called to do the same. Say amen to that. I'm trying to contain myself this morning and not get too excited. That was the first point. Here's number two. Divine purpose transcends circumstances. Put in the chat, I'm not moved by circumstances. Even when David was living as a fugitive, he maintained the heart of a king and the heart of a shepherd. He was like, I'm still going to be a king. I'm still a shepherd. I know who I am. When his men was discour were discouraged, he encouraged them. When they wanted revenge, he calmed them down. He taught them about mercy. When they saw themselves as outlaws, he, saw, he was like, no, you need to see yourself as mighty men. These were the mighty men that David raised up. See, when, when you know who you are, your circumstances don't define your calling. 
Put that in the chat. My circumstances don't define my calling. Just because David had a fugitive status, just because he was like enemy number one against Israel, doesn't mean that he wasn't called to be the king of Israel. See, when you know who you are, your, your purpose and your identity will help you to endure even the most challenging of circumstances. So discovering your purpose is paramount. You, you need to know who you are and what you're called to do. Now, when you know who you are, it doesn't guarantee that things are going to be easy. I would love to tell you that once you know who you are, things are going to be easy, but I would be lying. Actually, things may get worse before they get better and a lot worse, right? Things get, may get more challenging like they did for Joseph. We studied him for months like they did for David. We've been studying him for months. Why, am I, why are we studying the lives of these people when I'm teaching you on purpose all year? Because I want you to see what it looks like. As soon as Joseph got the dream, his life went crazy. As soon as David was anointed to be king, his life went crazy. I want you to... Now, eventually, Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt. Eventually, David became the king of Israel. But there was a period of time that they had to go through whatever they had to go through in order to become who they were called to be. And so just because you're called to do something doesn't mean that life is going to be easy. Doesn't mean that everything is just going to line up for you tomorrow. Walking with God down the path to your purpose is not a straight road. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're going, you're, you're going zig and zag, like you're being pulled from pillar to post. Like, like you, you, your location is changing, but your identity is not changing. See, see, while, while I'm being pulled from here to there and going up and down and left and right and all these things, I still know who I am. And knowing who you are keeps you sane and at peace. Put that in the chat. I, I Because I know who I am, put that in the chat. I am sane. That means that I'm in my right mind and I'm at peace. I'm not going to lose my peace and I'm not going to lose my sanity. Why? Because I know who I am. Put, put in the chat. I refuse to lose my sanity. I'm not going to lose my sanity. Why? I know who I am. I know what I'm called to do. I'm walking with God. Things may get challenging. Things may get worse before they get better. But at the end of the day, I, I still know who I am. My calling remains the same. God's hand is still on my life. No matter what I'm going through, I can walk over to the mirror and say, guess what? Hey, look at me. And you talk to yourself. Be like, I'm still called. Come on. Put that. Yeah, say that. I'm still called. God is still God. His promises are still true. And every promise that God has made me shall come to pass. Sometimes you got to minister to yourself. You got to minister to yourself. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord, your God. Like David, you must know that your environment does not define your anointing. See, what you're going through is temporary. But who you are and what you're called to do, that's permanent. Paul said it this way, for God's gift and his call are irrevocable. That's Romans 11 and 29. So God will never, God will never renege on you. God will never take his hand off of you. God will never say, nope, I called you, but now I'm not going to call you no more. His giftings and his callings are irrevocable. They are without repentance. God will never turn his back on you. Say amen to that. Number three, oh man, I feel good. I'm, I'm containing myself as I teach this stuff. Number three, purpose brings divine order. There's a certain level of order and structure. God does things decently and in order. And when you're walking with God and God is leading you, there's a certain way that you do things. Uh, put, put in the chat, I learn God's ways. The word of God contains the ways of God. The Holy Spirit will lead me in the ways of God. And there's a certain way that I conduct my life, that I conduct my affairs. There's a certain level of order and structure to the way that I deal with things. When David had the chance to kill Saul in the cave, he demonstrated the order of God. And his men said, hey, what his men creeped up to him and said this, this is the day the Lord spoke to you about. This is 1 Samuel chapter 24. They, the men came to David when, when Saul had his pants down, was using the bathroom, and, and, and the men wanted David to kill him. And David said, no, I'm not going to kill him. And they said, the Lord has put him into your hands. This is the day the Lord was talking to you about. In other words, they were trying to say, God's will is to kill Saul right now and for you to do it. And David was like, no, that's not how God works. There's a certain level of order and structure to the ways of God. And so he had learned to hear from God for himself. He couldn't go off of what they were saying. He had to go off of what he was hearing from God for himself. See, when you know your purpose, you develop a certain sensitivity 
to God's voice. And you also are able to discern, put that in the chat. I'm able to discern between good opportunities and God opportunities. Just because something looks good doesn't mean it's of God. No, God has a way of doing things and his way is the right way. And so there's a certain level of clarity that comes from me hearing God's voice and doing what God tells me to do, even when other people are telling me something different. And even when other people are saying, this is God's will, this is God's will. You got to know God's will for yourself. Put that in the chat. I know God's will for myself. Like David, you got to know that not every opportunity is a divine opportunity. He saw that he had the opportunity to kill him. And God was like, nope. See, purpose, when you know your purpose, you can discern between man's timing and God's timing. You can discern between man's ways and God's ways. You, you, you can't say yes to your purpose until you learn how to say no to shortcuts. Listen, God's timing is not based on earthly conveniences. In this world, they want you to, to get things, but they want you to take shortcuts. When, when you do things the right way, the godly way, divine order would lead to divine outcomes, and it may not be the fastest, but what you're not going to do is take shortcuts. You're going to do it God's way. You're going you're gonna to honor God in your dealings, in your conduct, and in your character. You're not going to cheat on your taxes. You're going to do what you're supposed to do. You're going to make sure, now, you're not going to overpay, but you're not going to be cheating. You're not going to lie. You're going to do things the way that you're supposed to do it. You're going to do things the right way, not the wrong way. Because if you do things the wrong way, it can ruin your blessing. The right thing done the wrong way can destroy something. No, you. David wanted God's will but he wanted it God's way. So, so when you know that you are walking with God and God requires godly character, then your no is just as important as your yes. Sometimes when people come to you with spiritual sounding stuff and they be like, hey, this is the Lord's will. And you got to know God for yourself to the point where you are not going to allow someone else to cause you to do something that is outside of the will of God for you. You got to know God and you got to know that God has a certain way of doing things and you want to do it God's way. Say amen to that. All right. Number four. Ooh, this is good. Last point for today. Knowing your purpose enables you to recover quickly. Say, I recover quickly. Listen, there are going to be times where you mess up. But when you do mess up, you got to recover quickly. And I'm dealing with David in 1 Samuel chapter 25. The whole situation with Nabal. So Nabal pissed him off. He grabs his sword. He tells 200 of his men, watch the stuff. Grabs 400 of the men. And they were like, let's go kill Nabal and kill everybody. He was insulted. He felt disrespected. He got in his feelings. He got in his flesh. He wanted to kill everybody. But the wisdom of God came through Abigail. And through Abigail, she helped him regain his clarity and his purpose. And he immediately chose not to take revenge. See, when God, when you know you're purpose-driven, of course, you're human. You're going to have temporary moments of humanity, right? But when the Holy Spirit provides you a course correction, you correct quickly. Say that. Say, I'm quick to repent. I'm quick to repent. I'm quick to do a course correction. I'm, listen, it's impressive to me that David was ready to kill everybody in one moment. And then when the wisdom of God came to him through Abigail and reminded him of his calling, and because he knew his purpose, then his purpose was able to anchor him in the sanity that helped him to get past his emotional reactions. So sometimes, like David, you're going to have moments of humanity where you get in your feelings, but the Holy Spirit will provide you a course correction, maybe through somebody like he did with Abigail. But however it comes, it could come directly or through somebody else. As soon as the Holy Spirit reminds you of who you are and what you're called to do, immediately you repent. Immediately you, you come back to yourself and you're like, you know, I'm not going to derail myself from my destiny. I don't need to avenge myself. Listen, God has, God is my defense. And so, so at the end of the day, we all make mistakes, but when you are purpose driven, you recover quickly. Say that I recover quickly. When you're walking with God in your divine purpose, and you know that the hand of God is on your life, you don't wallow in your mistakes. You receive forgiveness from God. You forgive yourself and you keep stepping. Charlie Mike, continue mission. Your purpose serves as an anchor and it's the anchor for your soul. I remind myself of who I am. I know that I don't have to take all these matters into my own hands. I don't have to get all up in my feelings. And, and Lord, I'm sorry, my bad. And I recover quickly and I get back on track. That's how we continue 
to become the man or the woman that God has called us to be, say amen to that. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I'm setting the tone for the whole week with the word of God. Now you say it. Say this. Say, Father, I walk in uncommon clarity because your spirit guides me every day. I see through your eyes. I recognize every setback as a setup for a comeback. My identity is in you. No one can change who I am in Christ. I hear your voice clearly and I discern your timing effectively. I am anchored in your purpose for my life, so I'm not moved by opposition and I refuse to get into my feelings. You are my defender. You are the God of justice and recompense. So I don't have to take matters into my own hands. If I ever get off course, I recover quickly. I have a laser focus on your fixed purpose. Nothing can derail me. Therefore, greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting my notes, go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, this was solid teaching, so I want you to do three things. Number one, leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. Number two, I like to read those. Number two, um, share this message on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. And number three, listen to this outro video. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.